Tonight I come as the bearer of good news. We all need good news this Christmas. Our world has seen enough bad news and hard news and difficult news from terrorist attacks, shootings, deaths, all kinds of disasters. A lot of homes will find an empty spot this year because of some of the tragedies that have occurred in the world today. But every Christmas, we have the wonderful privilege of proclaiming the good news. The good news is fear not, for behold, I bring to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. The Father has sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. This is the greatest news the world has ever received because the angels, as the angels told the shepherds, it would be for all the people. Christmas is God on a divine rescue mission. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world may be saved through him. The son of man came to seek and to save that which was lost. We have experienced a salvation by a Savior who has been sent from heaven to earth. This is the good news of Christmas. But the question is, is it good news to you? Is this good news for all the people that a Savior has been born? Is that good news to you? Now, I'm sure there's many people living in the world today who really don't see any pressing need in their life for a Savior. Let alone a need to be saved. For them, Christmas is nothing more than a seasonal holiday. A holiday with sentimental value that includes some religious activities. It's about having time off work. It's about going home to involve yourself in some very long-standing family traditions. For many people who have basically everything they need in life, they have a job, they have an income, they have an education, they have material possessions, they have friends, they have everything in the, that they ever need in life in free societies, they will find that they have no need for a savior. They have wealth and health and autonomy to do what they want to do and to go where they want to go. So the news of a savior born for them really isn't news at all. Nothing to celebrate. Nothing to really get all excited about. In fact, for a growing number of people in the world today, the idea or the thought of a Savior born to them is a, nation to, is a notion just to ignore. Maybe something to reject. Maybe something as just non-significant, bearing no influence on my life whatsoever. Some, it's met with unbelief. For others, it's flat out rejected. But I want to say for the shepherds, the announcement of the birth of a Savior was great news. It was very welcomed news. The times in Israel at their time when they lived were extremely oppressive. Very hard for people living in this nation. When the shepherds received the tidings of good news of great joy, for all the people, because a study of history would tell us that the Romans were quite ruthless in the ways that they went about exerting their control over the nations that they had conquered. And because of this, and the fact that the people of Israel were powerless to do anything about it, to change their lives in any significant way, to this rather bleak political situation, the announcement of the birth of a Savior coming to save was in fact very welcome news. It was good news of great joy. 
it infused hope and light into a very dark and difficult place. And you know, there's many places in the world today where good news is needed. You think of Aleppo. You think of all the refugees that still do not have homes. You think of those who are in war toward countries. Those who are at home tonight alone, wondering about the future, wondering about their life. There are many people in very desperate need of good news. The good news of a Savior born is very welcome news, especially to those who come face to face with their own mortality. The words, you have pancreatic cancer, is something that will scare you, something that will take you off guard, perhaps take your breath away as you think about it for a moment, because so many people that come down with this and are diagnosed with this die very quickly. When your oncologist says you have, on average, two years to live, that's the average. The news of a Savior born for you is very good news. I need a Savior. We all need a Savior. We're all in the same boat that's sinking when it all comes to the number of our days. I conducted five funerals in five weeks at near the end of this year of some very precious people with ages ranging from two months to 89 years making it very clear to me, if it wasn't already crystal clear, a Savior is needed. And the good news is, the Father has sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. It's clear from the Bible, the purpose of Advent, the purpose of the Incarnation, the purpose of God becoming human flesh, the birth of Jesus Christ is about God seeking to save people from the dreadful, dreadful consequences of sin, which is death. The Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. The Son of Man came to seek and to save that which is lost. Jesus said, for I didn't come to judge the world, but to save the world. And it really matters not if we've personally determined that the presence of a Savior coming to save the world is not something we really believe that we need. It's really not that important that we think that that's not necessary or that that doesn't have any bearing on my life. It's obviously very clear that it's something that God knows that we need. God knows that we need a Savior. And He's graciously and lovingly sent His Son to be the Savior of the world. The Son was born so that the world might be saved through Him. You know, I think it would be rather inconceivable to think of the one who created the world and by his very nature possesses infinite wisdom to send a Savior to save the world if the world didn't need a Savior. Think about that. This wouldn't make any sense at all, would it? God sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Because God knows we all need saving. And he's wonderfully provided us with a Savior. And the good news of great joy that shall be all for all the people is a Savior has been born for you. He's been born for me. And God knows that we are incapable of saving ourselves. We can't do it. Even though many believe they could, 
And many still believe they can. But we can't. And that's why God sent his son to be the savior of the world. There is nothing that we could offer to a holy God that we have offended through our rebellion and sinfulness that would ever merit or produce for us an eternal deliverance from the consequence of our sin. There's nothing we can do to escape the wrath of God that is the right of God to pour out on those who reject Him and those who walk away from Him and those who live outside of His purposes for their life. So the Father sent the Son to bear the wrath that He poured out in punishment for our sins so that we could be released from the debt of our sins. And this is the good news of great joy for all the people. God sent His Son to be the Savior of the world because God knows what will happen to us if we live and die not acknowledging His gift of a Savior. God knows what the future is. It's amazing how many people who don't think they need a Savior, you don't know what's going to happen after you die. But your Creator knows. He knows what's in store for every person after their life on this earth is complete. And He knows our future beyond this life without a Savior without a saving Savior, is not good. For we read in the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse 8, But for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for the murderers, the sexually immoral, the sorcerers, the idolaters, and all liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. Now, it'd be easy to say, well, I'm not on that list. Where would I be? Well, anyone who rejects the good news and rejects the Savior who's come to save them would certainly be in the category of the faithless. Without faith, without trust, denying the Son of God and His salvation. And I don't know about you, but when I read the second death, this is not anything any of us wants to experience. It's not anything that we'd want to take our chances with or delay our decision of receiving the eternal rescue that's been graciously given to us through the Savior who was sent to be the Savior of the world. God sent His Son to be the Savior of the world because we are sinners. We are people who have missed the mark. We are people who have fallen short of God's glory. And whether we want to admit it or not, we all need a Savior because we are sinners. But the good news is, this is a saying that is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Of the Apostle Paul says, of whom I'm the foremost. I'm the chief. I'm the greatest. I considered my life most unworthy of saving. And you think about it, he was the one persecuting the church. He was killing Christians. He was the least likely one candidate for saving. And he experienced through the power of Jesus Christ a salvation to eternal life. Since therefore we've been now justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies of God, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more now that we are reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. This is good, and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior. God, our Savior, desires all people to be saved. Every person in this room, God 
desires your salvation. And that you would come to the knowledge of the truth. And the knowledge of the truth is that we are going to die. And if we die without a Savior, we're going to experience the second death. If you receive the Savior and His salvation, you only perhaps have to die once. If you reject the Savior and His salvation, the Bible says we have to die twice. And the second death is worse than the first. Because the, the first death separates our life from this body. The second death separates us in torment from God forever. That's why the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Because He's not willing that any should perish. He doesn't want anyone to experience the consequence of the second death. But that all should reach repentance and be saved. And he makes it clear how we can be saved. Pretty clear. All who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. This Jesus is the stone that you rejected, the builders, which has become the cornerstone, and there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. A Savior is needed, not because we think we need a Savior, because God knows we need a Savior, and He has lovingly and graciously provided the world with a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And so this leads all to one important thing. A decision has to be made. God knows I need a Savior and has sent the Son to be my Savior. The question is, have I received Him to be my Savior? Has the knowledge of the truth about Christmas been personally embraced and acknowledged in my life? You see, the Bible tells us there are three typical responses that people give to the good news that the Father has sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. The first response is found in John chapter 1, where John says, He was in the world, and the world was made through Him, yet the world didn't recognize Him, didn't acknowledge Him, didn't know Him. There's a second response. He came to his own. And his own people did not receive him. They knew why he was here. They knew what he claimed. They heard the witness of those who saw and testified that he rose from the grave. They knew all of that. But they wouldn't receive him. And this is the judgment. Light has come into the world. The Father has sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. And the people loved the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light lest his works should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light. There's a third response. But all who did receive him. But to all who did receive him as sent from heaven to be the savior of the world. Who believed in his name. He gave the right to become children of God. And it came to pass. That everyone who calls on the name of the Lord. Shall be saved. That's the good news of Christmas. I was talking to my brother-in-law the other day, and he was sharing this story about a man that he knew who had been facing the challenge of cancer and cancer treatment, and 
receive from his doctor a clean bill of health. And the man went out from his clean bill of health and went to every person he knew and every person he came in contact and told them that they needed a Savior, Jesus Christ. He was quite bold in his presentation of telling people and pleading with people, you need a Savior who is Christ the Lord. You need to receive that Savior. You need to acknowledge Him. You need to welcome Him. You need to follow Him. And some people were a little bit put off. And he said to them, for all intents and purposes, I should be dead. But for whatever reason, God has given me life. And with that life, I will use it to tell every person I can that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. This Christmas is pretty special for me. I wasn't sure I was going to be here tonight. Seven months ago. For whatever reason, in God's merciful hand, He took me through a journey to bring me to this point where I could tell you without shame, with all boldness, the Father has sent a Savior for every one of us here tonight. Will you call on His name to be saved? Will you call on Him to give you a new life? To take away the fear of death, the sting of it, the hope of eternal life? Without this message from the angels to the shepherds, life is pretty bleak. You live it for today. However long you have this life, and that's it. With the Son who came to be the Savior, who was born this day in the city of David, a Savior who's Christ the Lord, we have hope. Christmas is a great season of joy and excitement because we can once again embrace the Savior who's come for us. God's eternal rescue has come into the world to save us from sin and death and separation from God. And we are told in Scripture, if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts that God has raised Him from the dead, we will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. So Christ appeared. So Christ, having offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time. This is the second Christmas. This is the Christmas we're looking forward to. Not to deal with our sins, because He's already done that. But He will come a second time to save those who are eagerly waiting for Him. Are you eagerly waiting for Him? The Father has sent the Son to be the Savior. Will you reach out and embrace that Savior? He wants to come be a part of your life. He wants to come make his, 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 his dwelling place within you. He wants, he wants to give you a new life. He wants to forgive you. And he wants, he wants to show you the life that God has for you through his power that comes through, to, through him. So will you acknowledge him by saying, Lord, I've sinned. I've, I've fallen short. I realize that. I realize that I need a Savior. And Jesus, I embrace you as my Savior. We're just going to uh, dim the lights now as we prepare for our candle lighting. Just want you to pray. Maybe uh, just spend a little time talking with God. and Maybe it's reaching out to him. Uh, I like to have all the lights off, yeah. And... Um, just spend that time in quiet reflection as you think about God's love for you in sending Jesus to be your Savior.